Congresswoman Lofgren, let me begin with you. You've played a role in every modern impeachment. We're going to show our viewers some of that evidence right there. You were on the staff of the House Judiciary Committee during the Nixon impeachment back in 1973, a member of that committee for Bill Clinton's impeachment in 1998 and the impeachment of President Trump today. Uh, but it appears that at least half the country is unconvinced by your contention that the allegations against President Trump are more serious than the charges against Nixon and Clinton. Make the concise version of that case. Well, in the Nixon case, he used presidential powers to influence improperly the election. He covered it up uh, using the FBI, the CIA. He abused his power and was uh, voted uh, articles of impeachment as a consequence. In the case of President Trump, not only has he abused his power uh, to improperly uh, put his thumb on the, on, the, on the scale for the election. He used a foreign power to do it. And that is, really hits all of the uh, buttons that the founding fathers were concerned but about. But as you know, the Republicans have made the case that the, the president didn't get what he wanted. He didn't get the investigation. The aid went through. Well, the aid was suspended for a while. As a matter of fact, people died while it was suspended. Uh, but he did use... Uh, that power to get that end. And it's not over. I mean, he is using agents to get uh, improper things done uh, to try and tar his opponent. Uh, and Rudy Giuliani, his agent, is in Ukraine meeting with KGB trained people today. This is an ongoing threat to the national security. The president said yesterday that uh, he's going to take a report from Rudy Giuliani. Rudy Giuliani is going to report to the attorney general. Well, I, th that's very interesting. But um, the fact that Mr. Giuliani, Mr. Sondheim have acted uh, to try and pervert uh, the national interest to the personal interest is of tremendous concern. It's an ongoing threat to the national security and it's abuse of power that is, uh, needs to be dealt with, really. It's, it's depressing, honestly. I wish the president's behavior had been better. You didn't think the Democrats should move to impeach based on the Mueller report. Does that mean you're against including evidence laid out by Mueller on possible obstruction of justice in these articles of impeachment? My personal view is we should proceed only on those items where we have direct evidence. And there is a lot of direct evidence relative to the abuse of power and Ukraine and the Russians uh, relative to the Biden investigation. The Mueller report is a report. We don't have a direct witness testimony for most of that. So I think we'd be on firmest ground uh, to move forward where we have direct evidence as with uh, the report we will receive tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. from the intelligence. And committee. we're going to be covering that. But that gets the other question that's been raised about the, the speed with which the Democrats are going forward. You're not going to have the evidence, as you said, from the Mueller report. Don McGahn hasn't testified yet to the House Judiciary Committee. You don't have the evidence of Mick Mulvaney, of Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, of Rudy Giuliani. You just called an agent of the president right there. And, and the Washington Post it had an editorial this week, and here's what they had to say about that. They said the Judiciary Committee may well have enough evidence to drop articles of impeachment, but the witnesses and documents that Mr. Trump is improperly blocking might well provide a fuller and, to many Americans, more persuasive picture of his guilt, and American doc democracy cannot afford for Congress to fail to establish its right to obtain them. The fight for them must not be given up. Why not wait for those witnesses? Well, the president has improperly withheld those witnesses. The idea that there's absolute immunity, that's preposterous. There is no basis in law or in the Constitution for that. I'm mindful that the last time we fully litigated that claim, it took 18 months. So to allow the president to engage in frivolous appeals so that the appeals extend beyond his term of office really is not what the Constitution provides. The Constitution says that Congress shall have the sole authority when it comes to impeachment. And so the question is, with the evidence we have, can we make a sound conclusion? I think we can, but when we get our presentation tomorrow from the Intelligence Committee, I think all of us will have a chance to say, all of this direct evidence, can we reach a conclusion uh, and move forward? as our responsibility under the Constitution 
uh, provides? And I think the answer is likely yes. Back in 1998, you warned Republicans against undoing, that was your word, a free election expressing the will of the people. Here's what you had to say. You will set the dangerous precedent that the certainty of presidential terms, which has so benefited our wonderful America, will be replaced by the partisan use of impeachment. Future presidents will face election, then litigation, then impeachment. Republicans are echoing that, echoing that argument today. They're saying that's exactly what has happened. Well, what I should have said, and I think I did say throughout the uh, uh, Clinton impeachment, was first you need a high crime and misdemeanor. Lying about sex is not an abuse of presidential power, maybe husband power. And certainly, Trump has done the same thing when it comes to uh, Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal. We're not proceeding on his lies about his affairs. That has nothing to do with the abuse of presidential power any more than it did in the Clinton administration. Here we have an instance, as we did with Nixon, of abuse of the power that is vested in the president. And the founders were very concerned that the president that they had created in the Constitution had enormous powers. And if unchecked, if use of that power was made to subvert the constitutional order, there had to be a remedy. And that remedy was impeachment. Finally, I do want to ask you about this shooting in Pensacola, the Pensacola Naval oh. Base on, on Friday by that Saudi national. And FBI is still investigating whether or not it was a pre-planned terrorist attack, whether or not there were accomplices. But in the wake of the shooting, does the United States need, need to be rethinking our relationship with Saudi Arabia? Well, I have a lot of concerns. We have, you know, they murdered a U.S. person who was a reporter for the Washington Post, murdered and dismembered that reporter We've never gotten accounting for that. So, yes, there are a lot of questions about Saudi Arabia. Congresswoman Lofgren, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.